to know when God is going to answer the prayer. But the Bible wasn't written by God. The Bible was written by man. And how do we know man didn't get the interpretation wrong? How do we know that during the Council of Nicaea that things weren't edited? Like, well, that's where faith comes in. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I understand that faith is key to every religious philosophy, whether it's Hebrew, whether it's Islam, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Buddhist, whatever. You have to believe. And belief is the strongest power in the universe. No two ways about it. But are we putting too much faith in a deity instead of putting all that faith in ourselves? I wouldn't put faith in ourselves because, I mean, we're, we're capable of flaws. I mean, God isn't capable of flaws. He's not capable of lying. Mm -hmm. So but how I do, think that uh, is just my... But how do we know that? How do we know that? Once again, it depends on your well, faith. You have to believe, right? Well, it depends on your faith and it depends on your experience. I mean, the book is a testimony of my walk with Christ. I've been a spirit-filled believer for 13 years, and God has never let me down. Wow. I've been in some real dark areas of my life and that only God can bring me out of. A person that has experienced God, mm -hmm. no one can tell them that God doesn't exist. So is it only the people who have gone through horrific experiences that are blessed with the hearing the voice of God? Why isn't it the people who live a righteous life, who never break the law, who do their very best to be upright citizens, who do unto others as they would have them do unto them, that don't hear this voice. I've been ta I've talked to so many people over the years doing this show and meeting them in public who tell me all these stories about their belief because something happened in their darkest hours. Why doesn't God give the same attention to the person who does good compared to the person who who falters on the way. See, I don't think God really, I don't really think we, we could put that on God. I think it's on that person, because that person at that time when they really need God, that's when they're really pressing in, that's when they're really looking for God, that's when they're really seeking Him. The Bible says, seeking mm -hmm. you shall find. When you really need God, that's when you're really seeking Him. All right, but the Bible, the Bible says, seek and you shall find it. Could it be that the Bible is saying, seek the answer within yourself and you'll find what you need? Well, I believe it's both. Because I do believe that after you pray something, mm -hmm. you have to step out on faith yourself and God will meet you in faith and help you along the way. I don't think that God helps people that don't help themselves because the person doesn't help themselves, do they really have faith? Because their faith would show action what do you what do you consider the action of someone who has faith to be I'm sorry I don't understand the question all right you said you know uh, if somebody if some how does someone have to prove their faith in order to be blessed with an answer with divine intervention I think that they would have to just make an attempt to mm -hmm. use all of the resources that's available to them. Such as? I mean, I, I, mean, I believe that every situation that a person's in, I believe that um, there's, I mean, God will supply them with everything they need in that situation to get out of that situation. But doesn't that give so, people the opportunity of getting into these situations if they know that God is going to get them out of it? Well, no. Well, I mean, it depends on what situations we're talking about. I'm talking about situations that life brings on you. I'm not talking about situations that you bring on yourself. I mean, you are you have free will, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put yourself in a situation, I mean... That's you in that situation. I'm talking about situations that life bring on you. Okay. Like God gave you free will. If you say, I want to put my hand on the stove, 
God is not going to pull your hand off of that stove because you made that conscious decision to use your free will and put your hand on the stove. So, so God won't help those who use their free will, just and using your example, who want to put their hand on the stove even though they know they're not supposed to because it's going to burn. He won't help them. Well, I'm not saying that he won't help them. What I'm saying is that they put themselves in a situation gotcha. to where it's consequences for being in that situation. What is it that you would like to accomplish with your book? Uh, I would like to help people to develop personal relationships with God, to view him as, um, I believe that when you start to view God as a father instead of like this spiritual being hovering over the earth, Mm -hmm. then you'll really begin to understand God when you begin to look at him as um, like a father, from a father to child aspect. Isn't that what the church is supposed to do? I thought they are, but I feel like a lot of churches are failing people in that uh, in that aspect. Why do you think that's happening? Ulterior motives, um, focused on, I guess, different things. Such as? Such as, I mean, it's hard to actually hold people accountable for their own actions, to tell people that... I mean, your relationship with God, how deep it it becomes, mm-hmm. is pretty much based on you. So are, do you believe I that mean, the people sure. of the 21st century in the year 2014 aren't devoting enough time to the glorification of God? I don't. I, I believe that it's a lot of distractions out here that um, that takes the focus away from God. So... I mean, where it's... I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. Where you can run to Walgreens or any other store and pick up medicine mm-hmm. instead of praying for uh, praying for healing. So you're I mean, saying... we have a lot of... So you're saying that by going to Walgreens or Walmart or the pharmacy and buying medicine, you're going against God? No, I'm not saying you're going against God. I'm just saying that we have a lot of other avenues um, in the 21st century other than relying on God. I mean, a lot of people don't choose, well, I'm not going to say a lot of people, but some people Mm -hmm. don't choose to put their faith in God. You and I will have to take a commercial break with the news here. We'll be back in about four minutes. Interesting. Geraldine is our guest, Exo Nation. He's the author of How to Pray and Get Prayers Answered. It's available on Amazon.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. Don't go away. Are you considering calling a psychic to read your situation? Then consider David Champion, a psychic medium for more than 20 years with thousands of readings under his belt. David Champion will make you feel comfortable. He has proven to be honest and accurate. He's a straight shooter. There's no guesswork. What he sees is what you get. While he is a medium, most of the calls focus on relationships. Not only love, but work, school, neighbors, and more. Need help with finding a job and preparing for the interview? Are you dealing with people who are obstacles in your path? For more information, go to davidchampion.com, $1.50 per minute, paid by credit card, with a minimum of 30 minutes. For your reading with David Champion, call 1-877-702-8598. That's 1-877-702-8598. Now you can dial in to listen to the Exxon Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24-7-365 by dialing 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080 24-7-365. 
Now you can dial in to listen to the Exxon Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24-7, 365 by dialing 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080. 24-7. 365. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob McConnell. This is the X-Zone. My guest this hour is Gerald Dean, and he's the author of How to Pray and Get Prayers Answered. His website is uh, the website that we're putting people to in order to purchase a copy of his book is Amazon.com. I have to ask you this, Gerald. You said before that you 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 made a a reference to people going to Walgreens buying medicine instead of praying to God. What happens to those who do believe in God, who don't go to the pharmacy, who don't go to see a doctor, who put all their faith in prayer and die? How do we explain that? I actually can't explain that. Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know every every aspect mm-hmm. of that situation to really be able to voice an opinion on it. And I'm not saying that anything is wrong with going to Walgreens. We were talking about, um, I guess, like why why people's faith isn't um, isn't where it where it used to be. And I was just saying that how people um, in the 21st century, we have other distractions. Like we have other means of healing other than praying to God. So some people, they don't want to go through the process of praying to God, um, I mean, tuning into God, asking for healing and everything when they can go right around the corner to Walgreens for healing. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. There was this lady, oh, I guess about 40 years ago, who was diagnosed with cancer. This lady was a devout Catholic. She had a crucifix in her bedroom. She went to church every Sunday. She did more for the community than I will ever know. The doctors in the hospital said there was nothing they could do. They sent her home. She was taken care of lovingly by her family. And each and every night, she would crawl out of her bed in what I could only imagine to be the most horrific pain that that woman had ever, had ever experienced. Asking God for one more chance. One more chance. Begging for one more chance. She prayed, she believed, and she died. She was 52 years old. How come God didn't answer her prayer? It actually may have just been her time to go. In that same scenario, my mother was in the same situation, Mm -hmm. and God healed her of breast cancer. So, I mean, it may have just been that that lady's time to go. I mean, we never know why God do what he does or why he chooses to... um, kill one person and mm-hmm. take the next. God has an overall plan, and unless it's revealed to us by God, I mean, we don't know why he chooses to do what he does. How is it, sir, with your devotion to your belief in God? And I commend you for it. I really do. How come you never became a minister? 